Welcome back to What's on My Needles. This week we are doing part two of the braided cowl. Um, I'll put it on again so you guys understand how this is worn. So it looks like it's an overlapping scarf that would be tucked into a jacket, a blazer, or if you're just wearing a little bit of something, it can go like that and you can just see the one piece of cable work across the front of the neck. So last week I showed you how to do the increases and working up through the first couple styles of um, cables that are used and then I went ahead and I almost finished it during the week so this is where I am now so if I was to wrap this around you'd see it's almost the right length like it would actually cross but I'm not at the end of the cables so I'm right there so I've got the cable for back to go and then I will skip over doing the twist uh, left and right and then and the cable for fronts which I showed in the last video and then I'll show you how to do the decreases to get back down to 18 stitches and then at the end I'll show you how to do the bind off because if you watch my, my dragon videos you know I hate sewing pieces together this is not sewn together. They are connected, but the, that's actually done through either a slip stitch or a bind off, depending on which school you're used to. If you're more used to a knitting school of thought or a crochet school of thought, they are essentially the same stitch. So in this case, it starts there and works all the way around to where the tails are. When this is sold, the tails will not be there. I just haven't gotten around to weaving them in yet. So let me get set up and we will get going. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the social media platforms. Links will be provided in the description below. So I'm going to go ahead and work that next row that has the cable for back. So C, F, or C, 4, B. Obviously, any time that you are working a cable um, pattern, you need to look at what the stitch guide says all the stitches are, or look at the chart that will typically tell you what they all are and how to do them. So in this case, I'm going to slip the first two stitches onto my bobby pin. Normally, this would be done with a cable needle, moving them to the back of the work. I'm going to knit the next two stitches. I move the yarn then to the front of the work so it doesn't get trapped in an unfortunate location. Then get everything ready to knit and knit two. And I'm just going to purl three and knit two and keep going like that until or keep knitting the nets, purling the pearls until I get to the next cable. So this pattern did in fact have two different um, cable patterns and I know I touched on this last time but this is a four strand either Saxon braid or braid and then this is an eight strand again it's either an eight strand braid or it's an eight strand um, Saxon braid. Different patterns will call these designs slightly different things. So again I'm taking those two stitches, moving them to the back, and knitting two. You can do this cable just like any other cable with a cable needle, with a bobby pin if, you, if you're like me and you like the fact that it just kind of stays put. Or you can do them with no cable needle just by taking off the stitches and rearranging like I showed last time. So I'm going to work a couple more rows and I'm going to show you the decreases. So I will be right back. 
So if you remember back to last week when I said that um, the width of this is the width of 18 stitches normally and we have to add a bunch of stitches, well now we have to take those stitches away so that the garter edge will be 18 stitches. So what that means is that I will be decreasing two, so half the stitches, so two stitches for every four, basically, yeah, all the way across until I get to the two salvage stitches on the other side. Now, I could just do knit two across all the way across, and I have considered it in the past, it doesn't look good. So what I actually do is I make slanted decreases. Uh, this one's going to be a purl one, so I'm going to be doing from the front. It's going to look like a uh, left leaning decrease. And then I'm going to do a slip slip purl, which from, again from the front will look like a right leaning decrease. And then knit two together, and then a slip slip knit. So I'm not entirely sure what the purl stitches are normally called. I end up having to put that into my um, pattern writing app so that I get the right stitch um, because my stitches are naturally twisted. So I'm not exactly sure if I'm saying the stitch is right, but the motion is right for how my stitches land on the needles. So I'm just working all the way across and I'm almost there and I'll flip over the whole thing so you can see that these decreases pretty much disappear. So you can see from the back on the, um, what's the purl section from the front, but the, it looks like the next section on the back, that they just kind of disappear. And after this row, I'm just going to go ahead and knit a few rows, and then I will be binding off. So, this is how it looks, and basically like you know that the stitches are going away, but you can't quite, it's not a glaring obvious that, that the stitches are going away. So now I'm just going to knit a few rows so that it looks like this side, and then I will be binding off. So I'll be right back. If you would like to help fund this page, please find me on Patreon at Theatrical Crafts. So I've now worked the garter edge border, or garter stitch border, sorry, and I've counted back the number of slip stitches on the other side. So this is made for, for females, so it is right over the left. Obviously if I release the pattern and you choose to make it yourself, you can make it whichever way you want. You can also ask me to remake it or redo this last bit if you would prefer left over right. And by the way, by the way, the link to buy these will be in the description below. So the bobby pin is in that first stitch that I'm going to use. I'm going to take the bobby pin back out. And I'm actually going to insert my needle into that stitch. I'm going to slip the first stitch put the yarn behind, pull it through that very first stitch, and insert my needle into the next slip stitch. I'm going to knit, pull through the slip stitch, and slip the first stitch over the second. Now, this is only 12 stitches back. I have 18 stitches to bind off. So that means that there's an extra six stitches. So it can't quite be one for one. I'll go over that in just a second. So again, I've inserted, inserted, and knit through both. So I actually need to double up on some of these, which makes sense since there are three of these slip stitches per inch and four stitches across per inch. 
So I'm going to go back to that same one that I just used, do the same process. Then I will do the same thing of knitting three or binding off three one for one and then doubling up on that last one all the way across. little too much tension on my working yarn causing a little bit of a problem. And working down the other end, because this is only going to get this side bound down, it's not going to bind down this side. So I'm actually, I'm actually going to do the other side the same way, but doing four stitches on top to three stitches on the bottom. Okay, and if you wanted to do this with a crochet hook, you absolutely could. Uh, mine is currently not up here with me, so I can't show you right now, but it you literally put your hook through both or through all the loops that you need to go through and then just pull through. So I've got one, two, three, four, five left. One, two, three stitches left. So I probably miscounted somewhere in there, but a little bit of fiddling in this section is not a bad thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and double up here. And I will essentially double up here as well. So the last one will actually go in a slightly different location, but it will still sit right at that corner. So along this edge, I will insert into the cast on edge insert into the slip stitches along the other side, pull up, and then do that. And I might not have the exact right size crochet hook with me, but I probably have one that is close. This is just my little tool keychain. So I have to be a little more careful with this because the crochet hook is not the right size. So I have to make sure to make the loops a little bit bigger. So when I double up, it's, it's not gonna make, you're not gonna see an extra loop on the back that I've doubled. Okay, so it's just work like this all the way across and that's how it's finished. And I will see you next time. This video was sponsored by Sam Cardenas, my stylist at Color Street. To find a link to my party through her, please check the description below.